Hi, my name is Emily, I'm a game developer, and here is how you can get started making video games. In this video, I'll be delving into topics such as different disciplines, game engines, principles, and resources, but before that, I wanted to give a quick introduction on who I am. I'm the founder of Sondering Studio, an indie game studio creating heartfelt narrative games. Before this, I was a designer at Instagram, and before that, I worked at Dorian, a mobile game about interactive fiction. Previously, I made a game called A Taste of the Past. It has an overwhelmingly positive rating on Steam. I was in the Game Awards feature class. I've been featured in Polygon, Game Devs of Color, and Code Coven Solstice Program, which is an accelerator for gender marginalized developers in partnership with Unity and sponsored by Xbox, Riot, and Clever Endeavor. What I'm trying to say is I've been making games for over three years. It has become my life passion and here are all of my learnings condensed into one video. Unless you're a solo developer, you probably want to specialize in a field. There are a lot of different disciplines in game development. In fact, a common misconception is that you have to know how to code. There are a lot of roles such as composing, art, writing that may not require any coding whatsoever. Here is a rundown of popular roles and additional skills you may need for each one. As a writer, you'll have to write for player interaction and choices. If you're a complete beginner, I would highly recommend Twine, a platform for writing interactive fiction. As a composer, you'll have to write music that is loopable and is easy to transition to and from. If you do audio in general, you'll also want to learn how to implement that audio into a game engine using a software such as FMOD. As a producer, you'll oversee and organize the entire game development process, balancing scope and vision. As a programmer, you'll want to learn game programming platforms and how to use an engine. As an artist or animator, you'll have to create art used for characters and backgrounds. You will want to be able to mimic other art styles, you may also want to learn how to implement your art assets into a game engine. As a game designer, you'll have to create a cohesive vision and structure for the game. As someone in QA, quality assurance, you'll want to test games for bugs and give quality UX feedback. QA is usually an entry-level role in gaming. There are a lot more roles than the ones that I just listed. Some of them are community management, live ops, and publishing. But let's say you have no idea what discipline you want to pursue. Here are more general tips. Regardless of what role you have, I would recommend everyone learn a game engine. Unity and Unreal are the most popular ones. I personally use Unity, but there are ones such as Godot, GameMaker, RenPy, etc. I can't speak for other game engines, but if you use Unity, I would highly recommend the Roll a Ball tutorial. It's okay if you don't know how to code, a lot of tutorials give you the code that you need. Next up, let's talk about how to learn quickly for game development. Game dev has a huge learning curve, so how do you ensure that your time is used wisely? I learned a lot of my skills in game jams, an event where you create a game from scratch in a short period of time and to a theme. Game jams are great because they allow you to try other disciplines and genres in a low pressure way. Even though I focus on writing through game jams, I've been able to try voice acting, music, UI design, and programming. With Game Jams, you get to work with a bunch of new people and potentially find a lifelong collaborator. You also never know what happens to your Game Jam project after the event is over. My game, A Taste of the Past, was largely made through a Game Jam. As a more mainstream example, Daniel Mullins, the developer of Inscription, originally made his game for a Game Jam. I do understand that Game Jams are inaccessible for a lot of people, specifically if you have a day job or kids. If you're in that situation, I would recommend choosing a Game Jam that is longer. A lot of game jams are two to three days, but there are ones that go up to 30 days. You can choose to work on a lower in scope personal project, one that lasts maybe a few months, and try to work a little bit on your game every single day. Now, here are the game dev principles that I live by. The first one is game dev is greater than the sum of its parts. Music on its own is powerful. Writing on its own is powerful. Programming on its own is powerful, but when you combine all of those together, it can create a cohesive mood that is greater than what those disciplines could have ever been on their own. At my game studio, we value every discipline to create work that can greatly influence the vision and tone of our game. This principle also influences my collaboration process. I'm a writer, let's say I am collaborating with a level designer and I'm writing a scene that is scary and stressful. 
The level designer may want to create a level that is scary and stressful. Platforms are breaking, maybe the level is shaking, and it's really difficult to get through it. Collaboration, for me, is what makes game development so special. The ability to work with all these different disciplines in a harmonious way to create an even better game. My next principle is to limit your scope. However long you think it'll take you to complete a game, double it. If you're making your first game, choose something super low in scope, i.e. do not make an MMO. Your first 10 games will probably suck and that's okay. It is always better to finish an imperfect project than to never finish at all. Embrace failure and do not choose your magnum opus as your first game. My last principle is to invest in a community. Join a game development club, find a local game dev meetup, or join discords. Communities are great because you can find team members down the line, you can have people play test your earlier projects, and you can play projects made by people with a similar skill level as you. If you're on YouTube, I would recommend watching GDC Talks, Game Developer Conference Talks, Noclip Documentaries, Game Maker's Toolkit, Brackies, Thomas Brush, and People Make Games. If you want books about the games industry, I'd recommend Press Reset and Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, both by Jason Schreier. These books will be linked down below, as well as in my Amazon storefront. They offer an insightful look into how games are made. If you're a programmer with no artist, can't find an artist, I'd recommend Pixel Art. It's a more accessible art medium because it does not require a drawing tablet. I use the program AceBright, love it. My programmer at my studio recommended Game Programming Power patterns.com. If you are a marginalized gender, a woman, trans, or non-binary, I'd recommend Code Coven. They are an organization that lifts marginalized genders up and they have a lot of cool events. Let's say you've followed all of the advice in this video and are now ready to pursue a larger, more ambitious project. How do you go about it? Create a vertical slice a fully playable portion of your game that is polished and serves as a proof of concept to you that this idea is fun and has legs. With a vertical slice, you develop a short portion of your game rather than working on your game all at once. You'll want to playtest your game early and if you develop the entire thing at once, it can be hard to find a section that is good for playtesting. Do not neglect marketing unless you are just making a game for yourself and close friends. Marketing is so vital to game development. Your game might be fantastic, but if no one knows about it, then it may not get the attention that it deserves. Have regular sync meetings for better communication. A lot can be lost through just typing on Discord. My team regularly meets to discuss what we're working on and how we can put all of those things together. Hopefully some of this information helped. I'm definitely open to doing more educational content on this channel. So if you're interested, subscribe and leave a comment down below telling me what video I should make next. If short form content is more of your thing, I also make more bite-sized videos on Instagram and TikTok of game development tips. Good luck.